name of Jesus, oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank God. We're back. We're back. Hit that subscribe button here. You can join us again at Unity NBC on our YouTube channel here in Sacramento, California. Uh, let us know what you think. Hit that subscribe button. Give us that thumbs up. That's all we're going to tell you is that Jesus is the only answer to this crazy, maniacal, mixed up world in which we live in. There's only one name given under the heavens by which men shall be saved at the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow. And that's all we're going to tell you, that Jesus is the only answer. Jesus is the only way that he died on the cross and rose on the third day morning with all power in his hands. We have been in the book of uh, Romans for quite some time. We are still in Romans, the 15th chapter. Last time we came at you from the 19th verse. Today we're coming to you from the 20th verse. And so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named. Least I should build on another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not announced, they shall see, and those who have not heard shall understand. We're going to take a subject directly from the 20th verse. My aim to preach the gospel. My aim is to preach the gospel. My aim is to preach the gospel. There's nothing more rewarding. There's nothing uh, as beautiful as preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Preaching this Bible. I love preaching this Bible from Genesis to the book of Malachi. From Matthew, Matthew, Matthew to the book of Revelation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's been rewarding. Uh, a lot of people today don't see it as rewarding. A lot of people try to do different things with the gospel, with the word of God, but stay in the word of God. Prayers out to that bishop in Australia that was savagely attacked and stabbed a few days ago. Uh, a lot of people today don't understand there's also a certain amount of danger because if you talk about certain groups, you may have backlash, you may get canceled, somebody may try to physically attack you, somebody may come up and say something derogatory about you, or derogatory about our Lord and Savior, derogatory about the Bible. But here it is, my brothers and sisters, stay in the Word of God. It's like where we had you at last week in the book of Romans when we did the 19th verse. And the mighty signs and wonders by the uh, power of the Spirit of God so that to Jerusalem and round about Iconium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. You want to be able to say, at the end of the day, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. If you've got somebody in your home that you're not following Jesus, you want to be able to say, I have fully preached the gospel to that person, to that wayward neighbor that hates God. You want to be able to say, I have preached the gospel to that person. They may want, I want to hear you. They may want to go with atheism. They may want to go with agnosticism. They may want to go on Islam. They may want to go on this, that, and the other, but fully preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And don't be ashamed to preach it. Don't be ashamed to tell people because in this same book of Romans, it tells you over a few pages backwards in the ninth chapter, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Hallelujah. And they shall preach, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing 
the word of God out of the book of Romans, the ninth chapter. So my brothers and my sisters and everybody that's listening, I stand boldly today to tell you to continue to follow the word of God, to get a deeper and more profound relationship with the word of God. A lot of people today are playing church. Stop playing church and get deeper into the word of God. The word of God shall cross your eyes at least two or three times a day. The word of God sometimes during the day take a time out to hear somebody teach or preach the word of God. Not just on Sunday mornings. And then we got to the point now where, well, uh, I, I, I'm going to go to church because they get me in and out. I'm in and out of there in 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Sometimes the Holy Spirit may be a little bit more at work. You don't have to, you may, there may be more things to do than just get you in and out. Don't be in such a rush to get in and out. Get deeper into the Word of God. One of that ways is to fall in love with preaching. That's why so many people can hear the Word of God and, and they go, well, I have questions about it. I don't understand where it's getting. I didn't get it. I didn't feel the Holy Spirit. You're not in the Word of God enough. Listen to the Word of God so that when somebody gets up in left field, you'll know it because you are deep and you have a deep relationship with the word of the true and the living God to our text. Romans, the 15th chapter, the 20th verse says this. And so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. What is Paul saying here? What he's saying is, let's read it from another version of the Bible. Still Romans, the 15th chapter, verse 20. I have always made it my ambition to proclaim the good news where the Messiah was not yet known. My ambition, my goal, my aim is to proclaim the good news where the Messiah, meaning Jesus, was not yet known. We should have an ambition. If you're a preacher listening to me today, if you're a church person today, your ambition is to get so deep into the Word of God that when you have to give advice, you give them biblical advice. When a friendship needs a shoulder to cry on, and if you say anything, make it be biblical. Make your thinking, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, make it be biblical. Don't, don't throw yourself into it. I know I have a friend who says that sometimes I'll say things and I'll go another way. And I, I got another way. Maybe I'll some good advice. Stay biblical. When you stay biblical, the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what I'm saying to you. The Holy Spirit is then going to come inside of that person. When I remember, uh, I told this story before. Uh, a young man was killed. And he was friends with my sons. And the day of, this, of, the, of the viewing, I went. And there are all these big young men, and there's little old me were by this boy's coffin. And I I and, and, and I didn't couldn't think of anything else to say. But there's only one name given under the heavens by which men shall be saved. That's I have to bring the word and name of, the word and name of Jesus there to how can I put this to bring uh, comfort to those young men. There was no other way. I remember we had a young lady that was killed by a bus. It was a terrible accident. The bus smacked her and killed her. And uh, at the day of the service, uh, the school psychologists and other people, they were, they were all, we're going to make a united front. Well, they all fell apart. But I came and I said, oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. A comfort. A calmness fell over that by that girl's, that child's coffin. I was able to help and to just bring an oh in the name of Jesus. That's all I could think to say. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And there's nothing like the name of Jesus. Only one name given under the heavens, and that name is Jesus. So it is my aim and my ambition to preach the gospel. Getting back to this verse again, so that I will not be building on someone else's foundation. Now, 
that sounds slightly arrogant. Why would Paul make that assessment and make that statement? Let's read verse 15, 20 from a still another version of the Bible. I always want to preach the good news in places where people have never heard of Christ because I do not want to build on the work of someone else who has already started. Are we getting now? I've read to you from three different versions of the Bible, 1520, and where that verse is coming from. I'm going to read it from a fourth. So now after this, I believe it will be crystal clear. Reading from another version of the Bible, Romans, the 15th chapter, verse 20. I have dreamed of preaching the gospel in places where no one else has ever heard of the anointed. Can you imagine that? Now today in our modern society with social platforms and social media being the way that you think, well there's probably is nobody on earth that has not heard about the anointed, has not heard about the Messiah, no one has heard about the Christ, no one has heard about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but that doesn't mean that they know who it is. And what Paul is saying here is anointed so that I do not have to build on a foundation laid by any one else, no other philosophy, no other group, and that's why you gotta be careful, brethren, when you preach, preach the gospel. This is not a time to do stock tips, this is not the time to do real estate speculation, and it's not the time to make people feel good about themselves. It's not good for any, it's not, it's not a time for any of that. It's a time where people that are, if they're lost, they'll find the word of God, they'll find Jesus, they'll get saved. If somebody is a, is, a, is a believer and they're discouraged, this is the time for them to find encouragement. If somebody needs that faith to go on, to go on, to go on, this is the time for that. But people are using this for all types of things. That guy's pouring syrup on Bibles and people doing uh, on trampolines and services in church and all types of foolishness that's going on now. Get somewhere where they're going to preach to you from the word of God. So I understand what Paul is saying. He's coming along now. He's saying, I don't want to build on anybody else's foundation. And I can't really blame them. I understand that. The foundation, our foundation, should be our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So when he says, it is always my aim, my ambition, aim, aspire, it's a long word, philimati minimum, philiatum minimum, which means aim, aspire. I aspire, I aim to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ with love and honor. Hallelujah. Now, not only are you aiming, but you're going to preach the gospel. Here's another big word. Evangelize, evangelize, where we get evangelize or evangelism from. So you aim to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our aim is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. One more time. Our aim is to preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 21 and then we'll be through with our lesson for today. But as it is written, but as it is written, to whom he was not announced, they shall see. And those who have not heard shall understand. When it says, but it as it is written, grasso, it is written, the word of God. When you see that, you're talking about specifically the Word of God. It means we are to pay attention. It means that we should stop and grasp. Start and stop and grasp the Word of God. That we should pay very strict attention to the grapho, the Word of God, as it is written. To whom? Now we go. The second part of that is. Isaiah, the 52nd, when you see the italicis in the 21st verse, it says, Isaiah 52, 13 through 15, to whom he was not announced, they shall see, and those who have not heard shall understand. Now, let's look at that from what 
Let's look at that from Isaiah the 52nd chapter. Isaiah the 52nd chapter, beginning with verse 13. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. When it talks about my servant, it's talking about our suffering servant. It's talking about our Messiah. It is talking about our Christ. It is talking about Jesus. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Verse 14, just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man. Meaning he died on that cross. He went through it for us. He went through craziness for us. He went through a horrible execution for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his form more than the sons of men. So he shall sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths at him. Any king who's been a king since that time, their lives' mouths were eventually shut in death. No matter how great they were, loud they were exalted. There's nothing and no one like King Jesus. Hallelujah. Kings shall shut their mouth at him. For what had not been told them, they shall see. And what they had not heard, shall they consider. So he is quoting in Isaiah. Paul quotes again here in verse 22. So when he talks about consider at the end of um, Isaiah 52, 15, the second part of that is understand. So we are to consider and to understand who our Lord and Savior is. To consider and to understand who Jesus is. As we get ready to go, preaching the gospel is not always easy, but we are to stay focused, laser focused, sharp focused on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The 19th number of Psalms, verse 13, keep back your servants from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me, that I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Here it is. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Who, O Lord, who, O God, who, O Yahweh, who, O Nisi, our Lord God Almighty, my strength and my Redeemer. We used to say at the end of that text when we were little ushers, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. I'm going to keep on preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's nothing on earth like preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ.